Are you ready to learn everything that you need to know about microphones and how they sound for music lessons on Zoom? Let's check it out. <laughs> Welcome to Woodwind Ninja. We've got a special guest coming in to talk with us today and give some examples of how different woodwind instruments specifically sound when played on Zoom with a number of different microphones. We're going to play flute, clarinet, bass clarinet, alto saxophone, tenor saxophone, and baritone saxophone. And we're going to use six different mics. We're going to use a Shure 57, a dynamic microphone, two different condenser microphones, uh, KSM32 by Shure, uh, Worker B by a company called Neat, uh, a Blue Snowflake, which is a smaller version of a Blue Yeti. It's a USB microphone, and then a ribbon microphone, an AEA R84. It's a very nice microphone. Uh, and we're also going to compare them against the laptop microphones so that you can hear a wide variety of different instruments played on different microphones and how it works. The conversation that Alden and I have is on an original sound, high fidelity, as is all of the playing examples. I've got everything indexed in the description, so if you want to skip to a particular instrument that you have an unusual uh, affinity for or a need to hear, uh, you can skip to that part if you don't want to hear the rest of it. Uh, I'm not going to go over the specifics of microphones and audio interfaces and all that. There are plenty of videos for that. When it comes to playing uh, instruments, over Zoom, I have a lot of experience, a lot of practical experience that I think can be very, very helpful. Uh, just as one side note, uh, we are using audio interfaces in this video uh, for our microphones. I am using a Behringer UM2. It's a very low cost uh, audio interface. Alden is using an Apollo Twin X. Uh, it's a very, very nice, super nice audio interface. That's all the info that we're going to really give you. We're going to be talking about the microphones with Alden, so let's check it out. Alden, how are you today? Great, how are you, Jay? Doing good. What we're going to do during this conversation is stay on original sound as one would be during a Zoom uh, music lesson, Got it. and we are going to be switching the microphones up so you can hear the difference in how it works to uh, speak on them during your lesson. I'm also going to be a little bit I'm going to move around a little bit while I talk so you can hear how it picks things up. Because I believe one of these microphones does not pick things up quite as well. We'll see if I'm right. Um, so right now, I am talking on my uh, condenser microphone, which is this Worker B microphone made by a company called Neat. All of that's going to be down in the description below. You know exactly what the stuff is, so you can check it out on your own. Um, right now, as I'm talking, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the and there it is. I'm going to turn back on my original sound because for some reason Zoom switches you back to uh, interesting the compressed, the, the compressed, suppressed sound when, uh, you, when you switch back. Um, Alden, what microphone are you talking on right now? Uh, I am talking through my condenser microphone, which is a Shure KSM32. Nice. Okay. Alden, can you give us a little bit of the internal microphone just so people can hear you speak? Uh, yeah. Let's switch that to the... Okay, now we're on the MacBook Pro microphone. It sounds quite different. It's, but I, I, from, talk, from a talking standpoint, I feel like it's okay. Did it switch you off of original sound? Uh, it sure did. Look at that. Uh, okay, I am so back. Pay attention to as a teacher in case you're doing any of this stuff. Very okay. interesting. I am back I'm, on original sound. I'm going to switch to my uh, microphone, which is called a Blue Snowflake, which everybody at this point has seen a picture of. Um, and it probably, I'm guessing, has a little bit more of a boomy sound to it. Yeah, more background noise for sure. Yeah, like that's one of the things about original sound is it doesn't do any background noise suppression. So I think in, in one of the videos, uh, you're probably going to get some of my child because my child is three and she makes some noise. And uh, that's probably going to make it into at least one of the videos that you're going to see here in the, in the microphone test. Uh, but the thing, the thing about this microphone is I could basically go into the, into the hallway and you can still hear me talk because it's casting such a wide net. It is probably pretty loud, right? Uh, I mean, it's, your voice is not uh, much louder, it's, but there's more background noise. So I guess, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Can you give us uh, a little bit of your ribbon microphone? 
Okay, great. Now we're on the ribbon, Mike. How's that sound? Sounds good. It sounds slightly different, but not, I wouldn't, you know. Um, okay. Is the volume any more or less? It's a little bit, I feel like it's a little bit louder. Louder, I, okay. Because I'm, I'm trying to keep them at the same, uh, reading uh, meter-wise at the same uh, output, but, you know, ribbon mics, although ribbon mics have less gain, I, I am going through a cloud lifter, which gives it boost. Um a cloud lifter, for those that don't know, is, is a it's like a a preamp for your preamp. Your audio interface has a preamp in it, and a cloud lifter gives you extra clean gain. That's what everybody says. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but everybody says it, so I will too. Um, but it, but it does give a little extra boost without giving any extra noise to the microphone. I mean, I'm not I'm hearing a very quiet room. The thing about a ribbon microphone uh, is that it 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 doesn't have any really that much sound rejection, right? So right. it's it's picking you up from the front and your voice coming back off the wall. Right, which, correct. Which is different than most of these other microphones. There is a little bit more sound rejection on a condenser microphone. And then on this dynamic microphone, the Shure 57, that's actually intended for live performances. So it actually has incredible noise rejection of anything that's not right in front of it. So those are some interesting differences. I'm going to go ahead and switch to my Shure 57. Okay, I am now on my 57. How does that sound when I talk, Alden? Uh, good. A little bit lower in volume. That That is the the single thing that I really don't like about this microphone is that I have I have my gain maxed at this point, and that's, and that's as much as I get. And I'm curious, Alden, let's say, I mean, there's really literally nothing I can teach you about anything. <laughs> much less music. But... Let, but let, let's just say I needed to get somebody from the other side of my desk, and I want to keep teaching. And I say, okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to get this. Can you can you hear me at all when I talk this way? I can hear you. It's less. You. It's it's a Lower. lot different though, right? Yeah. Because th this really is made like you know this is this has the proximity effect much more than most microphones. There you go. I find that to be the thing that I like the least about teaching with this microphone. Right. Although I do like the sound of it, and I do like that it uh, when I'm on original sound, as I am now. Uh, I feel like it doesn't give me quite as much room sound as the other microphones. Right. Which, which I think, which I think is an asset, but it is it is a much much quieter microphone. It doesn't do as well picking up the lows, um, and and I think that that I'm guessing. I don't know. Like it's it's interesting to try and guess what the sound of Zoom is going to do. Like, right. Um, uh, that's one of the things that, that that we were talking about, and I think it's going to be an interesting thing to learn. Um, I'm actually I'm actually so insecure about talking on this microphone. I'm going to go ahead and switch it again. <laughs> well, let me ask you, Jay. Uh, in terms of just speaking, uh, do you prefer my condenser microphone or the ribbon microphone, just uh, as our normal my normal microphone here? I'm preferring the condenser microphone. I, I feel like there's a resonance that's a little bit distracting. Interesting. Okay. But that's getting away from like whether I actually like the tone of your voice, although. I mean, when have I not loved the tone of Alden Banta's voice? Actually, every tone Alden makes is something that I love. But I, but I do feel like that, like that is a little bit of a detriment in terms of how that functions in terms of just picking up, picking up your voice. Um, no, it's, it's interesting. It's good for me because I have been teaching mostly with the ribbon microphone. Um, so I think maybe I'll try to use the condenser more now. If um, I mean, we also well, we have the speaking thing, but then we also have. How does it sound when we're playing? Like we've said in the past, we are basically setting these microphones up in a position that can be heard for our, you know, voices and have the sound picked up for the instruments, not the optimal mic placement for recording the instrument or the voice at that. Right, right. I mean, it definitely is putting every one of these microphones in a situation it wasn't really designed for. Except except for the laptop microphone kind of, right, which <laughs> I'm, I'm going to just make a wild guess that it doesn't fare well compared to the other microphones. Here's what we've done. We've made a video. You're going to hear Alden playing on... Condenser microphone, the KSM32. And then his ribbon microphone. Which is an AEA R84. And then I'm going to play on my Shure SM57. And then I'm going to play on the USB microphone, the Blue Snowflake, which is sort of the little brother or cheaper version of the Blue Yeti which is the most popular microphone, which is not in our extravaganza. Uh, and then I'm also going to play, uh, oftentimes, on the laptop, 
And then always the last video of me is going to be on this uh, condenser microphone, this Worker B. And there are some laptops thrown in there, but they are all uh, whimsically and elegantly uh, illustrated in the video, uh, what, what everybody is playing at every given moment. I was thinking we should just say up front, there's some problems with the scientific nature of this in that we're not in the same room. We're not the same person. Uh, we are not playing the same equipment. We're playing the same instrument, but not the same mouthpiece, not the same read, not in the same room uh, for these different microphones. So there is a little bit of a flaw in the scientific process, but I'm hoping that everyone will forgive us because as we record this, we're in a pandemic and you know, we're doing the best we can. Uh, so, but I think there is something to be learned. Uh, I've put some of Alden playing on a laptop microphone, some of me playing on a laptop microphone, so that there's kind of a wide range of things to compare. We've tried to give you every range of every instrument that we own. So we got some high flute stuff, we've got some low baritone stuff, some low bass clarinet stuff. We tried to get loud high notes, loud low notes, soft high notes, soft low notes. We tried to get it all in there so that if you don't play one of these instruments that we play, you might be able to figure out what your microphone needs to do for you and would be able to, to intuit which one would be uh, a good choice for you or what direction you want to go. I mean, I think that there is a lot to, you know, hearing some of the details that are still probably going to be available in Zoom that the microphones are going to probably illustrate a little bit differently. All right, Alden, here we go. All right, Jay. Let's play the video. All right.
Thank <laughs> you. 
curious, Alden. I mean, now, now that we've done this, what have we learned? I, I believe we're running a range of an $80 microphone on the low end to a $1,000 microphone on the high end. And I'm curious, Alden, like, like what do you think? Uh, well, it was uh, very interesting to watch it, um, to hear it um, all put together as you uh, beautifully did. That's a lot of work, I know, uh, that you put in there. So thank you for doing that, Jay. I think the biggest takeaway is that any microphone is better than the laptop microphone. Of course, we're doing all this through Zoom. That's the whole point of this, to see. And Zoom does its thing to the sound, which we're not exactly sure what is going on uh, technically, you know, because it's not really the purpose of this. Is there that much difference between uh, the expensive microphones versus the affordable, whatever, uh, going through Zoom? And I'm not sure that there's a huge difference. Um, but there are differences. Um, well, one of the things that was interesting to me is how much uh, louder my USB microphone was in general. Uh, and, and like, I, I can certainly turn down the input volume, but there still is sort of a, I almost feel like it's, it's like an electrical wire that's falling on the street that's completely uncontrolled. <laughs> and and, and which, which seemed to make more differences like when the actual instrument was louder. Like I feel like on the baritone saxophone, that's a very wild sounding microphone. The ones I noticed the most were the alto, baritone, and the bass clarinet. I felt like those represented the biggest uh, differences in what the microphones were picking up and, and how that got translated through Zoom. Yeah, I, I think, um, especially for the larger instruments, again, we're, we're not setting these microphones in the most um, optimal 
recording position. So for me, um, they're basically eye level. Uh, they're about a foot away, foot and a half away from me. Um, so for the larger instruments, you're not putting it really in a position where it's picking up the low end and the high end in the best way it could be. Um, but again, that we're doing this for the purposes of Zoom. So um, yeah, so I think the larger instruments are, it's more complicated because they're just more tubing. Definitely having a microphone is better than not having a microphone. I want to just reiterate that like when this, when this whole thing started a year ago, I was very tech averse and mm -hmm. I've gotten very interested in stuff. And I specifically bought a USB microphone because I did not, the idea of having a, uh, an audio interface was too much for me. Uh. You know, like, you know, we're scared the world's going to end and everyone's going to get sick and die. I don't want an audio interface. That seems like that seems like a lot. So I I, I bought the the USB microphone, but believing I, what I think turned out to be true is that it's better than the computer microphone. But uh, it it also just doesn't give you the amount of control that you have with an audio interface, and you know like, and the fact that it's casting such a wide net gives you a lot less control in terms of the placement of the microphone, and how much that matters even in the fundamentally compromised place that we're using it for Zoom. You know, for anybody that stuck with us throughout this long in the video, this was a conversation that started a few months ago that we finally decided what pieces were playing, actually got our act together, and recorded all this stuff. And uh, it's been, a, a, it's, it's been uh, one of the rewarding projects of the pandemic for me to be able to see one of my closest friends in the world, get to hear him play so much, get to talk. And so, anyway, I just want to say thank you. This has been a lot of fun. But let me tease the next video. I might have this done by the time this video goes up. We are going to also show you what all of those clips would sound like played into the computer. So right. we're going to we're going to illustrate the differences in each one of those microphones compared to what they would sound like without the uh, magic of Zoom into uh, a digital yeah. audio workstation. Yeah. So look for that. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to make it the, the video that pops up at the end of this video. So just, you know, if you got time, go ahead and click on it now. I hope that you got some value from this video. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button. <laughs> like and subscribe. Ding that bell so you can get more uh, more of this content that might be helpful uh, in terms of woodwinds and zoom and sound and whatever else that you might hope to get. All right. Thanks for watching.